in this nitty gritty basics let's play live stream we're going to be playing american mahjong using the national mahjong league card at i love maj the nitty gritty basics demonstrations are all done at i love maj because they have a wonderful exercise room we'll be using charleston decision making probably next week because today's topic is on high risk sabotage and that's going to require watching what the robots are doing at the table so we're going to be reactive today high risk sabotage that is the topic for today it's a little bit more advanced than i usually share so you'll have to let me know if you're a beginner if you find this overwhelming and if it is just pick and choose one or two tactics to help you begin thinking strategically on how you can block your opponents from hand development while you still develop your own hand and decide if you're going to play to win or fold. Please write your comments in the chat as we go. And if you're watching the repost first, thank you for that. And then also write your comments below the video and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. You can also join us on Facebook if you use social media because we do talk through a lot of strategies and rules on Facebook. You can find links in the video description below. I want to say thank you again for watching my videos. Channel members, thank you so much for supporting Maj Life. And moderators, thank you for being here to help moderate the chat. Today's format is nitty gritty, so no socialization. If you like gameplay with social socialization and shenanigans, join us on Fridays starting at 6 p.m. Eastern time. All right, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, I've already got it. Let's see here, right here. There we go. High risk sabotage. Can you hear me okay? Somebody give me a, a go in chat to let me know that you can hear me i can do a quick test also hold on yep yeah, okay i got my hi mona all right great here we go high risk sabotage buckle up when you're playing this game the object of the game, of course, is to complete a winning hand. Secondarily, you want to not lose. You don't want to throw a winning tile. And you want to try to keep your opponents from developing their hand. And that's what high risk sabotage is all about. The high risk part is when you sense that your opponents are getting close to a winning hand. And we're going to talk about how you can tell. The first step is you need to be aware of red flags. The next step is you're going to assess your position, then observe tells. Next, choose tactics. And then lastly, you're going to take action. So we're going to step through these and then we'll do demonstrations at I Love Maj with robots. Awesome, Sandra, thank you. Okay, so beware of red flags. What are the red flags? During the Charleston, one red flag is if an opponent is passing blind. That can be an indicator that they have a well-developed hand. So they don't have enough tiles to pass. They don't want to give away a keeper. Now, keep in mind here that they could be in between categories or in between hands. That could also indicate that particular situation. But you want to think about the worst case scenario and plan for that. So if someone is passing blind, the best way to interpret that 
if you if you know them especially eventually you'll be able to determine whether they're in between or if they know what they're playing and sometimes a tell for this is their speed in passing their their physical action so if somebody for example after receiving a pass they quickly take two tiles and then take one tile to supplement that pass there's like no delay to me that would be an indicator that they probably have a well-developed hand now if they delay and they're thinking about what to do and then they pass maybe two and supplement if there's a delay there that could be an indicator that they're in between so think about speed with their actions passing blind that's one red flag the next would be stopping the charleston this is a big red flag and typically when experienced players stop the charleston they have a well-developed hand. Very rarely will an experienced player stop the Charleston if they're in between. There's a disclaimer here, though, because there are some experienced players who stop the Charleston as a tactic. They do that consistently. And when that occurs, they are harming their own hand development, potentially, as well as the hand development of their opponents. So even though they can slow the hand development for their opponents, they're doing the same thing to themselves because they're denying themselves the opportunity to potentially improve their dealt hand further with 12 more tiles up to 12 because after the first left you're going to pass left across right in that last right you can pass blind and in the optional cross you negotiate with your opponent across from you up to three tiles many times when someone stops the charleston the opponent sitting opposite will not pass tiles to that player because they need they assume that the player has a well-developed hand that's why i say up to 12. some people might think well really isn't it nine no not necessarily because some opponents will exchange tiles it's best not to though because they could be near a, a ready hand so consider that the next flag is that in the optional across they negotiate low so here's an example i'm sitting across from you and i pass one blind in the first left that's the first red flag then i think a moment and i say i want to stop the charleston that's the second red flag then i pause and i am reactive i wait for my opponent to offer a pass and if they don't offer which i expect that they won't but if they don't then i might say would you like any tiles I don't say how many I want yet. I just say, would you like any tiles? And they're going to decline or they're going to negotiate. So if they say, sure, I'll take three. And then I might say, how about two? So that would be a low negotiation. If I say one, say no, thank you. Really, if I say even two or three, say no, thank you. Because the likelihood is that I have a well-developed hand. So these are the red flags during the Charleston. Opponents passing blind, opponents stopping the Charleston, and uh, opponents negotiating low. Three red flags. If any of these occur, you need to 
be mindful of that going into the next phase of the game. And that's what we're going to talk about next in the play. The play is after East discards that first tile. So East discards, and now we're going to be playing. So here are the red flags that occur in this phase of the game. Any post-exposure discard, I need to add one to this, an early exposure. If somebody makes an exposure when the short wall is in play, that would be the second wall, that is a red flag. Because they're willing to risk giving away information. And also many times that first exposure could have jokers. So they're going to risk losing a joker in an early exposure. So an early exposure and then post-exposure discards. You want to watch the relationship to their exposure. So like if I, let's say someone discards a seven bam and I call it and I expose a Kong with a joker of seven bams and then I discard a six bam. You can assume that I'm either playing maybe a consecutive run hand in mixed suits or big odds. So it will help you identify what category they're playing or maybe the pattern of their hand. And you're going to continue to watch their discards. So an early exposure is the first red flag. Then the post exposure discard is another red flag. And incidentally, these will continue through the game. Next, an opponent making more than one exposure. The more exposures someone has, the easier it is going to be to identify their category and their hand eventually. Because you're going to watch those exposures and by process of elimination, figure out what category they're playing and then maybe even what hand they're playing if you know the card well. Lastly, if opponents start discarding jokers, that's another big red flag. Typically, that is going to mean that they're either playing a jokerless hand or they could be waiting on a single tile or maybe they're waiting to complete a pair. So you should have heightened awareness and defense with that last bullet for sure, that last red flag, if anyone discards a joker. So what do you do with all of that? You're going to assess your position. Your position in the game is going to be based on the hand development after the Charleston. So after the Charleston, after you've received all your passes and you have hopefully improved your dealt hand, you're going to assess your position. And you're going to do that by counting your discards. So whatever category you're playing at this stage of the game, probably you may not have picked a hand yet. Maybe you have. If you have, just count your discards. If you have more than four discards at, at the begin game, when East discards their first tile, or during that second wall, the short wall, you are likely an underdog in the game. You're probably trailing behind the pack. Take a low risk approach until you have a hand with no gaps and few weaknesses. And we're gonna look at some examples of this. So this would be the underdog position, low risk. You're going to take low risk. And depending on how things go with your opponents and what they reveal, you can either increase your control of risk or you can pull back and take more risks depending on what happens at the table. If you have four discards, you're likely a contender for that game. 
This means you can take a moderate risk approach and expedite your hand development. And that would mean claiming discards and making exposures to help quicker, quicken hand development, expedite hand development by using discards. Keep in mind that every exposure you make is going to reveal information just like your opponents. So four discards, you're likely a contender. If you have less than four, you're likely a front runner for that hand. Regardless of risk, expedite hand development. So for example, let's say you're in that begin game and someone discards a joker and you can make an exposure with a Kong. Someone discards a tile and you can make an exposure with jokers. Let's say you want to just uh, make an exposure with Kongs and a couple of jokers. It's okay to risk that because you're a front runner with only four discards. After that exposure, you discard and now you have only three. And the game is still in that first short wall. So being a front runner means that you can take more risks. Let's look at some examples. So here up in the right corner, you see the short wall. That's a bird's eye view of a table, short wall in that upper right corner. And this is the hand after the Charleston. We have odds, odds, the first odd hand in one suit. And we could maybe even play five, seven, nine in one suit if we maybe get a red dragon, for example. So let's just say the first odd hand in one suit, and we would have four discards, really five, because we have an extra nine crack. So because there are five, we're an underdog. So we want to take a low risk approach if this were our hand. The weakness for this hand right now is the one crack. We need a pair for that. And we have only one. That would be an example of a weakness. Another weakness is the five crack, because for this hand, that needs to be a Kong. We have two, but we can't call anything. So that would be an example of another weakness. So this particular hand, even though there are no gaps, there are two weaknesses until we get another one crack or maybe draw a five crack or a joker. And then we can act on the three crack and pung, Kong the five, Pung the seven, and be ready to win maybe on that five or that one crack. So kind of plan it through in your head briefly and, and see where the hand can go, what might happen as you continue to develop. But in this case, because we have five discards, we should assume that we're in that underdog position and take a low risk approach. All right, next, we're going to look at this example. We have Winds and Dragons number seven. This would be the concealed hand. The concealed hand. We have news. We have extra east because we only need singles there. And then we have a Pung of sevens and an eight dot. So in this case, we have four discards. So we would be a contender we could take a little bit of a higher risk here. Even though it's a concealed hand, we've got our singles. All we need to do is build. We need tiles to help with the eight dot, the north, and that's it. So we could get jokers maybe through picking or joker exchanges. So we would be a contender if this were our hand, four discards. Here's another example. We have like numbers number two. We have a couple of jokers, and then we have three pairs of ones and dragons. We're missing one dragon, the white dragon, and we have two discards. Two, we would be a front runner here. So we can take any level of risk and just play at will. In this case, this is a concealed hand, maybe. We could, since we have two jokers, we could Kong these ones and discard the flowers, in which case that would put us back to a contender. Because with the dragons, if we decide to play the exposable hand, 
we would have four discards. So that would be an example of taking this hand a different route to expedite hand development. Let's say, for example, someone puts up a pung of white dragons. That's going to limit your ability to get that last dragon. So you might switch to the exposable hand, and that would it, that would basically mean the two dragons would become discards. So your position is going to change depending on the decisions that you make and what happens at the table. Let's look at another example. We have a consecutive run hand. And the consecutive run hand for this one is the second hand down on the right, one, two, and dots, three, four, and cracks, Pung Kong, Pung Kong. We have another pair on the left, but we have four multiples that can be used for that second hand down. So I would earmark the twos, the two cracks, as potential joker bait, which is another tactic that we may be able to demonstrate later when we play the game at I Love Maj. But here you would discard one of these twos in the middle of the game and maybe someone will make an exposure with a joker and then you can do a joker exchange with the other tile. That's called joker bait. And that particular tactic was coined by Tom Sloper of Sloperama. So thank you, Tom, for that. So in this particular case, we have five discards. However, three of those discards are clear and the other two are joker bait. So we have the potential of getting a joker. So the, ca the, the categorization is a little bit different. I would say we have three discards with joker bait. And to me, that would make us a front runner because if we do get that joker, then we're just going to confirm that we're in, we're advancing. So we have three clear discards. The two cracks we're going to hold on to a little bit and see maybe if we could get jokers there. So this would be an example of a front runner because we have joker bait. And that, of course, is going to depend on what happens at the table. If somebody in the begin game or even the early part of the middle game discards a two crack and nobody wants it, well, then it's going to become a discard and you're going to adjust your position accordingly. You might put yourself back to being a, a contender, bump back if something happens with the potential for joker bait. Just bump yourself back to contender so that you're prepared to take the appropriate level of risk with as you develop your hand. Okay, any questions about position? Underdog, more than four discards. Contender, four discards. Front runner, less than four discards. So the magic number there is four. Under four, or I'm sorry, over four would be an underdog. Four would be a contender. Less than four would be a front runner. Any questions? I don't see any questions, so we're going to keep going. We're going to start talking about sabotage. Okay, here we go. It's going to be really important for you to learn how to compartmentalize the game. and. Using Hop Toys Strategy by Wall is a good way to do that. So the Strategy by Wall originally was introduced to the community by Tom Sloper, and I've used that strategy myself and over time have added my own tactics to it, which is why I call it strategy, Hop Toys Strategy by Wall. So the Charleston is what I call the pregame. This is before East discards the first tile. The game doesn't officially begin until that point. So the Charleston is a pregame hand development expediter. That Charleston, the whole purpose of the Charleston is to help you further develop your dealt hand so that when the game begins with East discard, and the game kind of slows down where you pick one tile at a time. 
getting these three tiles up to, uh, let's see, three, nine, ten times. Let's see, I'm sorry, seven passes. So right across left, left across right, and then the optional across. That's seven passes, up to 21 tiles. You're going to be able to further develop your hand to some degree, hopefully. So that's what happens during the pregame or the Charleston. Then we have the begin game, which is the short wall, second wall. Here, you want to, you know, after the Charleston, you're going to assess your position. And then when East discards, you're going to hopefully know at least what category you're playing. And then if you can pick a hand by the end of the second wall, if you can. Sometimes it's not possible. That's okay. Just continue, continue to gather and build. The middle game is the third wall. If you can, try to be ready to win by the end of the third wall. That's a good goal. It's, it's hard to do, but it's good to set your sights there. Build with the end of mind, basically. Try to be ready to win by the end of the third wall, if you can. And then the end game, which is the last wall. Actually, here, I just want to mention, if you're not ready to win by that end of the third wall, adjust your position and bump back so that you can focus on sabotage. If you have four discards and you're at the end of the third wall, or maybe you don't even know what hand you're playing yet, make yourself an underdog and switch to sabotage. Basically fold your hand and discard safely. And then maybe the next hand, you'll have a better start and be ahead by this point for the next game. Live to fight another day, basically. So, and I need to add the end game, which is the fourth wall. In that fourth wall, that is where you really want to heighten defense and decide if you're going to play to win or fold and discard as safely as possible to keep your opponents from further developing their hand. So now we're going to talk about how to observe tells. This is kind of what the beginning of the sabotage because you've got to gather information. It's going to require you to observe what is happening at the table, not just what's happening in your own hand, but what is happening at the table. And if you don't already know, a tell is a change in a player's behavior that can give clues to that player's viability of their hand. This comes from the poker world. The same thing can be done in Mahjong. There are all kinds of tells, well, three kinds specifically that we're going to talk about. It is a change in a player's behavior that gives you a clue on the viability of your opponent's hand. The first type of tell is a verbal tell. This is where their filter might slip. They may say something about the game or maybe even their hand that gives information that you can use to your advantage. For example, somebody might be frustrated and say, where are all the flowers? They need flowers and they have none. So you could take that to mean they're either in the wall or maybe your other opponents have the flowers, but also that you have time to build your hand because they're behind. They have no flowers and they want them. So they gave away information by verbalizing something about their hand. That would be an example of verbal tells. There's a whole other video, lots of videos on tells. I believe it's Look for Intel Gathering, I believe is the title of the videos on tells. This I just want to cover very briefly because we're going to talk more about sabotage, what to do with this information. So the next two would be physical tells, and that's where people flinch. It's kind of like a verbal tell, only 
they're not speaking, they're moving their body, they're, they're using their body or their, their emotions are being expressed through their body, whether it be maybe they're, they have their, their chin in their, in their hand, or maybe they're covering their mouth or their forehead is in their hand like this. I mean, those can all be expressions of frustration, boredom, and, you know, maybe their hand is not progressing as they want it to. Those are all tells, physical tells, the way they use their body. It could also be a flinch or a smirk. So facial tells come in here as well. And then there are tile tells. The tile tells are the ones where they're manipulating their hand in some kind of way. Maybe they're shuffling their tiles quickly that could be an indicator that they're switching their hand. If that's done in the middle game after someone makes an exposure, well, they're basically starting over with a hand or maybe they're switching from one hand to another or maybe even changing categories. Who knows? But a lot of times after somebody makes an exposure, somebody might need to change their hand and the, the tell there would be, probably tile tells where they're shuffling their tiles. Another would be if people turn tiles, that's another tile tell. Somebody discards something and then a, another player will turn a tile. That usually is an indicator that they wanted that discard. So the tells are all behaviors exhibited by your opponents that can give you information to help you decide how to proceed with your own hand, whether you're going to push or fold. Consider, though, that there are bluffs. People can bluff. An example of a bluff would be in the middle game. Somebody picks a tile from the wall and they rack it, and then they maybe pause a moment and they discard a natural tile, a symbol tile, and then someone discards and they mahjong and they have jokers. They could have thrown a joker, but when you throw a joker, that's another red, that's a red flag, just like we talked about earlier. So as not to alert the table or spook the opponents, they'll discard a natural tile because they have enough of them to cover that gap and then they're still ready to win they just don't want people to think oh my gosh they discarded a joker they must be waiting on a pair or a single tile they must be ready to win or they're playing a big hand a pair hand so there is such a thing as bluff so can keep that in mind and people also can use tells as manipulation deception they could just do it even if it doesn't apply. Some people, for example, will decide to fold in the end, end game, let's say. Someone discards a tile and they have a pure exposure that they can make. Some people will make an exposure even though they've decided to fold just to sabotage someone else's hand. But I disagree with that particular strategy. It is something that people use, but I, I think it's a bad move because it gives away information. Some people use that, though. So keep that in mind. People can manipulate the game. But if you learn how to read tells, especially if you play with the same people all the time, you can gather some information that can give you an advantage at the table. Let's now talk about how you can use that and sabotage your opponents or block them from hand development. This would be taking action or inaction that will deliberately destroy, disrupt, or damage their potential to develop their hand. So you're going to choose tactics on what to do. One thing that you could do is destruction. This would be a deliberate action that inv involves destroying their hand. And this is going to require uh, time, 
it's got to be timely and mindful. So for example, let's say in the middle game, somebody discards a three dot and an opponent flinches. And let's say you have a three dot in your hand. That flinch is a tell. On your next turn, if you don't need that three dot, I would discard it. That would be a deliberate action because you saw that tell, the flinch, and you're thinking, well, they must have needed it and couldn't call it, so now I'm going to let it go right away. That is a deliberate act to sabotage their hand. And it's timely because it was just discarded. So instead of holding it, discard it. That would be an example of destruction. The next would be wastage. Wastage is a deliberate action that involves discarding a joker or discarding a symbol tile that you could have used in a joker exchange. And usually these would be red flags at the table. If someone discards a joker, red flag. And if someone also discards a tile that could have been used to do a joker exchange. For one, you don't want anyone to have a pure hand. So you're wasting that opportunity to get the joker so as not to give them a, a pure hand. But let's say you don't even need a joker, so it doesn't matter to you. Now, I just want to briefly say something about people discarding a tile that could be used in exchange for a joker. Never say anything about it. Don't bring it to anyone's attention. Oh, you could have exchanged a joker for that. Don't do that. Because they could be doing it deliberately and it will highlight that action and frustrate them because they may have used it as a tactic, a wastage tactic. So it draws attention to their playing style and that could cause some hurt feelings. So don't comment on any tactic that's being used. Really, you shouldn't talk about anything in a, that has to do with the game and play, whether it's your own hand, your opponent's hand, what someone discards, what someone uh, maybe doesn't do this inaction where they could take a joker exchange. Don't comment on any of that. Talk about the weather. Talk about your grandkids, what have you. Uh, talk about what you're having for dinner tonight or don't talk at all and just play the game, depending on the atmosphere or the, the culture of your group, of course. So the point here is that you don't want to draw attention or give attention to the decisions that other people are making because it, it could be intentional. Okay, so wastage. Next, we have inaction. This is the deliberate inaction that prevents an opponent's hand development. And typically, this is going to happen if you decide to fold. If you decide your hand is not going anywhere, or maybe you're blocked because you needed a pair. It's late in the game, end of the third wall, and you need a pair tile, and someone just made a pure Kong or a pure Pung. And you, there's no way for you to get a joker, and there's not enough time for you to pick another hand. This is where you may want to fold and start discarding safe tiles. The inaction would be that you are not going to be discarding tiles that could potentially help an opponent develop their hand. So that would be holding tiles you think they need. And it would also be using tiles you think they will need. If you decide to play to win, you could maybe have time or the flexibility to switch your hand and use tiles that you think they could need instead of discarding them. For example, I've played a hand where I had a, I picked a flower from the wall in the end of the third wall. And I have jokers in my hand and I could switch to a hand that uses flowers with those jokers. Instead of discarding a flower in the late game, I'm going to change my hand to use the flower. That would be an inaction because I'm not going to be discarding that flower. Instead, I'm going to use it myself, which is kind of the other side of the coin in that the action I'm taking is to repurpose or reset my hand and use that flower myself instead of discarding it and potentially giving somebody a winning hand or maybe an opportunity to call it and make an exposure and develop their hand further. So we have 
destruction, wastage, and inaction. Those are the three tactics that you can use to sabotage your opponent's hand. All right, any questions? We're getting ready to look at one more consideration, and that's risk. Okay, here we go. Risk. When you are at the end of the third wall, you're going to assess your potential to win. And the way that you're going to do that is look at your weaknesses or if you have any gaps or weaknesses, a gap would be, let's say you're playing three, six, nine, and you have no threes. I would fold. Let's say that you need, you're playing a hand with four pair, a concealed hand, like maybe the consecutive concealed hand that needs four pair and you have two singles that need to become pairs. That would be two weaknesses. You might consider folding, especially if your tiles are out on the table as discards, or maybe they're in an exposure, or maybe you're, you think your opponent has them. So those are kind of some things you want to think about when you assess your position at the end game, right at that third wall, or, or I'm sorry, the end of the third wall, going into the fourth wall. In that end game, you want to try to assess where you are in relation to your opponents, because if your opponents are further ahead than you, you might consider folding and just play defense so that you can block them from winning and then play another game where you might have a better opportunity for quicker hand development. So here's how you can decide pick by pick what to do. On the left, we have the likelihood of a discard being risky. You have some that could be improbable. Let's say, for example, I draw a two crack and there are three out that have been discarded. That would be an improbable tile that could give somebody a winning hand. The risk is unlikely if three are out, if you can account for three tiles, whether they be discards or maybe one is in an exposure and two are discards. That two crack would be would have improbable risk. The next would be possible risk, and this would be fewer discards are out. Let's say only two are visible. That's going to increase the risk level of that particular tile. And if only one is out or none are out, well, then that's going to be a probable tile that could either help someone develop their hand or win. So think about the likelihood of that newly picked tile, if you don't need it yourself, What's going to happen when you discard would be the impact that it's going to create. There are levels of impact. The first is an acceptable level of impact. And that might apply if somebody has no exposures. You have no idea what they're playing. Or maybe they're playing a low, a low point hand and you're okay with paying 50 cents for a hand, let's say. So that might be an acceptable impact if you pick a tile that is risky. Next, we have a tolerable impact. Maybe someone has one exposure. You still don't know what they're playing. Or maybe you, based on discards, can figure out that they're playing a higher point hand. It's not, it's going to have a higher impact than an acceptable impact discard an acceptable situation because you're going to end up having to pay higher if if they have happen to be playing a more valuable hand then there's an unacceptable impact where somebody has two exposures and you have a tile that you pick from the wall with someone having two exposures you can figure out what hand they're playing by process of elimination looking at the discards and other exposures that are out, you can figure out what that person is playing. And incidentally, all this is probably more on the advanced beginner side, or if you're on a spectrum from beginner to advanced, it's kind of edging into the middle where you're advanced beginner or maybe intermediate. So some of this might be a little 
too advanced for you. If so, then just let this go until later and then incorporate these things as you gain confidence with the game. So the final impact would be intolerable. This would be if somebody has three exposures. If you draw a tile that is has probable risk, you do not want to discard that tile. You're going to fold. So you're going to think about these things. What, what is the likelihood that my discard is going to give someone the ability to expedite hand development or potentially win? And what is going to be the impact of that win? And it's going to be acceptable to intolerable based on the number of exposures. So with that, on the acceptable side, improbable and possible have low impact. Probable, if you have a tile that maybe only has one discard out, that's going to have a medium impact. So you want to think about that. Next, we have tolerable. And this increases, as you can see, we have medium impact and a high impact. If you if you if someone has one exposure and you draw a tile where there's only one out, that's going to have a high impact. If someone has two exposures or maybe they're playing a quint, a high value hand, the impact is going to be higher. And in, even if you have a, an improbable tile like a, a let's say that two crack and there's two out that's going to have a medium impact with somebody who has two exposures or maybe an exposure with a quint if you think they can use that tile you might fold and then if it is a possible winning tile or a probable winning tile it's going to have a high impact you might get criticism from your opponents if you discard a possible or probable winning tile for someone who has two exposures, that's a high impact. And then finally, we have high and extreme. If someone has three exposures and you discard a probable winning tile, that's going to bring some reaction from your opponents who are going to have to end up paying for that hand. So train yourself to be observant, watch for tells, Try to figure out what your opponents are playing if you can. If it's a little too advanced for you, that's okay. Table this for a while. And then as you gain confidence, come back to these videos and learn how to read the table. It will give you an advantage at the table. Even if you're a beginner and you use these concepts, when there are high risk situations at the table, like somebody having two exposures or three exposures, you'll know to, to probably downgrade your position and fold and discard safely and do it confidently. That's the goal. All right, I'm going to stop sharing now because we're going to play at I Love Maj. Let me know what you think about that. I may move that to the nitty gritty prime time because I think it's pretty advanced. Intermediate, maybe, which is why I initially put it here in this session but it may be too advanced. So if I can add um, another basic strategy or skill, I'll probably replace it and put that in the prime time. So let me know your thoughts on that. If you're a beginner, let me know if that is just too much. If it's just too advanced, too overwhelming to think about those things, let me know. I welcome the input. And then I'll make adjustments based on the response. Okay, so I'm going to go to this layout and we're going to play Mahjong. We're just going to go straight to playing with robots so that we can monitor their exposures and try to look for their discards. It's going to be very challenging to do at I Love Maj because they, they don't do random discards. They line the discards in rows. So it's very difficult or impossible, I should say, 
to remember who discarded what with that kind of a layout. So the only thing we're going to be able to do is monitor exposures. We and post exposure disc uh, post exposure discards that we can watch for as well. So we're going to remember the red flags. I'll try to speak to them or point them out as they occur. And then we're going to focus on our own hand development and try to demonstrate high risk sabotage against robots. So we're going to launch a game and play with robots. So get started here. Okay. And also the other thing we're going to talk about as we go is position. So I'll be able to demonstrate how to assess your position after the Charleston and then as the game progresses so that we know the level of risk we can take when playing the game. So in this particular dealt hand, it's going to be challenging because we have no multiples. We have a widespread West one, two, six, eight, nine, and BAMs, two, three, five, nine, and cracks, two, four, five, six, and dots. I would choose the predominant pattern and see what we have left over. So if, if these were my tiles, I would play either two through six, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, something like that or I would play evens. So let's just pull off the evens first to see if there's any particular pattern that shows up. So there's two, four, six, eight. We have seven tiles towards two, four, six, eight. And we have one, eight, three twos, two sixes. We have two fives over here. So because we have only one eight, I think I would instead play consecutive run. We have more tiles that we can use with consecutive run than we do with two, four, six, eight. And it's much more efficient because you can go up or down in a sequence than with two, four, six, eight, you skip a number. So you need specific tiles limited tiles. So I think we should play consecutive run. Two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six. And let's just start there and see what happens. We could even maybe do one, two, three, four, but I'm thinking two, three, four, five, or three, four, five, six, primarily because we have two fives and two sixes. So that kind of pushes us up into higher numbers rather than going low with a one, even though we do have one, two, three, four in here. Okay, so we have three tiles we can pass without having to let any of those tiles go. So what we're looking for is three clear discards to pass, and we have them right there. It's a little bit risky because we have an eight, nine in mixed suits, so it's not as bad as if we had like an eight crack with a nine crack. This is not too awful bad, but there is some risk there and that's okay. There's going to be risk in every pass. So now what we're going to be keeping an eye open for is a multiple because that's going to be the trigger for us to target the multiple because American Mahjong is a game of multiples. Pair Pong Kong all over the card. There's not a hand without them. There's no hand with just singles. Even in the singles and pairs hands, there are pairs. So <laughs> you want to leverage that strength, multiples, pair Pung Kong. So if one develops, we're going to reassess. We have a, a multiple right here, three crack. So we completely now reassess. We have a three crack pair. So that's where I would start, three crack pair. With a three crack... I see that we could maybe play a three, six, nine hand. Let's just look quickly at three, six, nine. There are five tiles that we could use for three, six, nine, but we also have one through five, far more. So I would give up the big numbers. The sixes will go. 
maybe even the red dragon because we won't be able to use that red dragon unless we get flowers and we have no flowers. We have a gap. And therefore that th red dragon, even though it's pretty, it corresponds with cracks, which we have one, two, five right there. But without flowers, that red dragon is useless. So we're going to discard it. And we're left here with one through five targeting three. The three crack is the new strength. And we have four discards. So we stop the analysis. Just stop right there because we have three clear discards. The red dragon, a six dot, and a nine. Bam. So we can pass. It's a little bit risky, but every pass has some level of risk. You want to focus on developing your own hand first and then do the best you can with what you have left over. And the sixes and the nine, red dragon, that's what we have left over. So that would be the safest we could make it. Okay, now we have a one bam paired up. Anytime you develop another multiple, reassess. We did pick up a three dot. So we have a three crack pair and a one bam pair. Hopefully we'll be able to use a one, two, three of some kind. We have two clear discards. So now we have all keepers remaining after letting the six and the eight go. So we need to let something go here. With a one bam and the three crack, one, two, three, four, I'm thinking, one, three, five. We could maybe try for little odds, but we have no flowers. And if we were to use a little odd hand, let's say the five dot, one, three, five, mix suit Kongs with a pair of flowers, that would be the third hand down. We have no flowers. So I wouldn't even think about playing that hand. So the five dot might be a good discard. We may not be able to use the one or we may not be able to use the three. We have in here one, two, one, two, six hand down under consecutive run. We could also do uh, one, two, three, four, if we get a four crack. So with one, two, one, two, or one, two, three, four, you know what, if we get a white dragon, we can maybe even play a year hand. So I'd probably keep all the twos and threes. So probably I would discard. Let's see. We do have a hand in here, by the way. One, two, three, four. Or no, no, two, three, four, five. So it would be two, three, crack, four, five, and dots. So at, at the moment, we probably should pick a hand. I think what I would do here, since we could do two, three, four, five, pong, 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 pong with cracks and dots, I think I would let the five crack go. We still have options with one, two, one, two. We still could maybe do a year hand if we get a white dragon. We could still do one, two, three, four if we get a four crack. So there's still a lot of potential here by giving up that five crack. So let's let that go. We did not get any keepers, which means we can just stop the analysis and keep going. So we're going to continue this red dragon, not helpful without flowers. And we have no flowers, so we're not keeping it. We're going to pass. All right. We have a new multiple, two new multiples, two crack, three crack, four dot five, two, three, four, five, Pung Kong, Pung Kong, no gaps, three multiples. So that's what I would probably focus on. Maybe the one bam can be joker bait later. We have enough discards to think about that. So let's pass five crack with, let's say, a two dot and a three dot. We have two, three crack, four, five dot. Second hand down on the right. No keepers. Let's pass south, nine with a one. Let's see here. One, two, three, four. Actually, let's keep that one. If we get a five bam, we might be able to play that fourth hand down. Single pair pung, one, two, three, four dot five bam. So let's discard this two dot. 
And that is a great pass right there. A wind, a big number in one suit, and a little number in a second suit. This is the best kind of pass you can do. We got a five crack back and two wins. And we can pass fully here in the optional. So let's pass the south, the five, and the seven. Okay, we did not get any keepers. This is now where you want to assess your position. We have a hand with no gaps. We have a weakness though, two weaknesses actually, because the three crack and the five dot need to be Kongs. We have a pair of threes and a single five. So those would be weaknesses. No gaps, but we do have weaknesses. If we played one, two, three, four dot five bam, that would have a gap. We would need a five bam if we decided to play that hand. I would still keep the one crack. We have a pair we don't need. We might be able to use this to help us get a joker, maybe. And we have four discards. So we have four discards with joker bait, a hand with no gaps, and a potential hand with a gap. Again, we have weaknesses. So I would say that we're probably, um, I would say we're an underdog on this one. Because even with joker bait, we don't know yet if that's going to be useful until we start seeing the discards. So I'd say we're probably an underdog, which means we need to take a low risk approach. We don't need wins at all. So that's what we're going to start with for discarding. Okay, so nobody wants the red dragon. It went around in the Charleston. That'll be a good discard. If I'm not playing wins, those go first, and then the dragons, and then the year tiles. That's the, the, the um, I call it a triage. That's the order in which I discard. Wins if you're not using them, then dragons, and then year tiles. And the reason is that wins and dragons, since they're in fewer hands, are less likely going to be in exposures with jokers. And I want to optimize my potential to get jokers because they're going to help me build my or develop my hand. So the three dot would be an example of a year tile. Year tiles are predominant this year to 2023. There's two twos in there and they're, the 2023 is also in the biggest hand on the card. And I want to try to sabotage that hand. I don't want to pay 75 cents or 75 points to somebody or even discard into that and pay double. I don't want to do that. So that's why I include year tiles as my first discards if I'm not using them. Clearly, if I'm going to use it, I'll keep it. Like, for example, we might be able to do one, two, crack, three, four, dot. So let's keep the, the three dot. So we're going to ignore this red dragon. We don't we don't need that. No flower, flower. Oh, there's a Kong up there. Kong of flowers. That's a good thing to notice. And incidentally, that would be a red flag. That robot, that person, let's call him Joe. His name's Joe Curtis. Excuse me. They made an early dis, an early exposure, a pure Kong of flowers. So they're committing early. They're either taking a big risk in a Kong of flowers, because that's going to limit their hands they could play, or they have a well-developed hand, which could also be the case. So that would be a red flag. That's an example of a red flag. So we need to try to watch what Kurt Joe is discarding to see if we can figure out which hand that uses four flowers could they be playing. There are several on the card. You can look and, and see yourself the hands with four flowers on it. Okay, or in it. All right, here's a white dragon. We're going to pass, of course. We got oh, a nine dot, but we want to let the wind go. Okay, five, bam. That would be a keeper if we were to play the fourth hand down. But there's nothing we can do about that. And probably I would take that hand off the option list.
Okay, pair of red dragon. Nobody wanted the red dragon. So you might think, oh, Joker bait. No, that has no power because a red dragon was discarded. Plus it went around during the Charleston. Just because you have an unwanted pair doesn't make it Joker B. It has no power in this case because nobody wants the red dragon. Okay, we don't need big numbers. Okay, so we have, we've had one, two, three discards. So we're still in the begin game. To the right, Wes expo made an exposure. That's another red flag. So we have two robots who have made exposures in the begin game, red flags, which further solidifies that we are likely an underdog. So we need to continue with a low risk approach for this hand. Okay, so we'll let the red dragon go. Now this six crack would probably be a good discard because of what this player on the right has. So probably I would discard that next. Okay, now that would be potentially one of our tiles. We're not gonna be able to call it. So one of our tiles is out. Okay, we have a six crack that we can let go of. This nine dot might be able to give us an opportunity for a joker exchange. Either the one or the nine, we'll see. And we're at 78 tiles remaining. Joker bait typically is ideal. The timing for joker bait ideally is in the middle of the game. 60 tiles remaining. So we have a few picks before they kind of need to simmer a little bit. We got to give our opponents time to gather tiles so they can call. That's how Joker Beat works. Also consider that nine crack has been discarded. That would be like numbers around potential Joker Beat and there's no interest. So that kind of weakens that particular Joker B. Also, we now have a pung of one BAMs. That also weakens Joker B because what that means is that our opponents, if they have a one, they and they don't have enough jokers to call to make an exposure, that's not gonna give us that opportunity for a joker exchange. So in this case, even though it's a pung, we have stronger potential with two, three, four. So we're going to let that one BAM go right now. And let's just see what happens with it. There's no interest whatsoever. So I would discard those next. All right. So we, we the four is in our range, but we're not interested in BAMs. We're working with cracks and dots. It seems that nobody wants nines, but the nine dot... We don't know yet about that because our opponent on the right, for example, Wes, they could be playing big odds. Maybe they want the nine dot. We don't know yet. Okay, so let's hold the seven and let the one go. There's a seven bam out also. So that'll probably be a good discard. Okay, now that for us would probably be a Kong and we're not ready. So we have to let it go. Although it could be a Pung if we played the fourth hand down, single pair Pung, one, two, three, crack, four dot Kong, five Bam Kong, but we have no five Bam. That's a gap. And one is out. So I would not consider calling that at all because that is a huge weakness. Okay, here we have a keeper, three dot, one, two, crack, three, four dot. Let's let the one bam go. Okay, we don't need that. That would be our tile, but we're not ready for it. Okay, so let's see. The seven bam is already out. We're going to let that go. Okay, so the player on our left, Agata, has not had any exposures yet. That could also be a red flag, by the way. 
They could be playing a pair hand. They could be playing a concealed hand, which means that hand value is going to go up. So there's risk there. They could also not be ready, which is kind of where we're at. Okay, we don't want wins. It looks like nobody wants wins. So those should always be safe discards for now, for this hand. Okay, eight dot, six dot, nine. Okay, we're at 56 tiles remaining. Let's let the nine dot go and see if we can get a joker exchange opportunity. No. So we'll let that go next. That would be a miss. That is a missed, a um, joker bait miss. Okay. Let's let the nine dot go. Here's a two, two, three, four, one, two, three. We're still just going to gather and watch, observe. So we have a, a Kong of Flowers and a Flower discarded. So five are out now. Nine dot, nobody wanted. We're at 48 tiles. The six dot and the eight dot, those are. Those have not been discarded yet. We clearly don't need them. So I think we should discard them. There we go. There's a pure Kong over there. I would discard. Let's see. So they're doing, they have a seven crack, eight dot, seven crack Pung. So they're playing, let's see here. Seven eight seven eight seven crack eight crack pung kong seven dot eight dot pung kong they're playing pung kong pung kong second hand down in two suit oh no no sixth hand down so we're gonna still let the six dot and nine dot go next so they're playing seven eight seven eight on the right so that's Six flower out. Nobody wants nine dot. Green dragon. Dragons typically I let go of early because they gain risk as the game progresses. So I'm going to let that, that green dragon go first. Seems like nobody wants dragons. Okay, now here's jokers up for grabs. That is another red flag. They're risking two jokers in an exposure just before the end game. That is an, a, a, an assertive maneuver, basically. So that is a red flag, and we need to probably switch to defense. We need to fold and play defensively. Our goal when, a, when we fold is to sabotage. We wanna discard as safely as possible, to try to keep our opponents from developing their hand. Since they have a Kong of sixes, we're now going to hold that six dot because they could be playing like numbers with sixes. Four flowers. Like numbers with sixes, first hand under that is probably what they're doing. I mean, it could be. They could be playing a three, six, nine hand, or they could be playing something consecutive. So I pr probably would not discard that five dot either because they could be doing four, five, six mixed soup Kongs. All right, well, let's discard this, or let's let this go. We're, we're folding. We've got two players with two exposures each, and we, we have a hand in here, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, but it has weaknesses. Let's get a joker, and we know nobody wants nine dot, because it's, Two are out. So our, our super risky tile right now is that six dot. If it if it is discarded and our opponent, Joe, doesn't take it, then we can discard it and play to win. So right now, we're probably going to be folding. We're going to play to fold, most likely. But if someone discards a six dot and Joe doesn't take it, we might be able to discard it and then play to win. Especially now that we have a joker. Okay, now here, I was thinking that nobody wanted wins, and there's a south. 
it's the east and west that are out. No norths are out and there's a south out. So Agata is playing a wind hand and they have an exposure almost in the end game. We're at the last pick of the third wall and they made an exposure, which means they're playing to win. If anybody at this stage of the game, end of the third wall, going into the fourth wall, if anybody makes an exposure, assume that they're playing to win. So we have three players playing to win and we have weakness. So we should fold. All right, now we have a one crack. So we have one, two, three, four. It looks like nobody wants the two dot. With a pung of souths, this should be safe. Even though it's, oh yeah, here it is right there. There are two out. We might be able to throw the three crack too. So we have one, two, three, four. The five dot was thrown. We might be able to unfold and play to win because we have this joker. We could pung the one crack and the three dot. We could Kong the two or the four, but not both. So what we want to see here is someone, we want someone to discard a six dot because that is going to be risky. We are officially in the end game, 40 tiles remaining. <gasps> That's risky. Okay, we got a four crack. Let's see, none are out. Five dot, let's throw that. Okay, there's four crack. So now if no one takes it, we'll throw it. So that, that'll be a safe discard for us. That is going to be very risky now. Seven dot, the player on our right, seven, eight, seven, eight. They want that tile. Flowers, it appears nobody wants. We have 27 tiles remaining. Joker. Oh my goodness, this hand really turned on a dime because now we have potential to win, but we have two risky tiles. This player across from us, I think they're playing like numbers with sixes. How many six bams are out? Let's see here. One, no six dots are out. And one six bam is out. North and south to the left. They could, they're probably playing north and south with a run. Maybe they're playing four, five, six. Let's see what happens here. Let's, let's call and just see what happens. I'm still hoping someone will discard a six or a seven. Okay, let's pung. All right, now. Hmm. Oh, I want to play to win. Of course I do. One, two, three, four, six dot. Okay, now this is where you think about that risk matrix. There are no six dots out and there are no seven dots out. This is going to be a, we have two exposures. So this is going to be a tall, uh, intolerable impact. I should not have made that exposure. We should fold. We're folding. I do not want to throw those tiles. If you know, if you have risky tiles that are going to have an intolerable impact and they are a probable keeper for your opponent, fold. I should not have made these exposures, but I wanted to win. So I did it. No regrets, though. We're just going to fold at this point. Okay, 8 bam. 8 bam. Well, let's throw the one. We know nobody wanted that. Okay, here, look. Six dot. They didn't want it. So now we can let it go. Okay, we still have a risky tile, so I don't regret folding. 
All right, that would have given them a win. All right, so we did not discard the winning tile. So I'd say we did good, even though we didn't win. All right, let's play again. All right, what do we have? Another widespread. So we look for the predominant pattern. We have Northwest South, White Dragon, two BAM, three crack, some year potential in there. We also have six, seven, eight, nine. There's some two, four, six, eight in here, but it's really, really light. I think what I would do is focus on probably wins or maybe a year hand. And I would let probably, we have like numbers with sixes, six, five, eight. Let's let the seven, oh, that's really risky. Let's let the, let's see here. Let's let a six dot go. Actually, let's let the six crack go. All right, we'll start here. Let's see what happens. Okay, wins. We're gonna probably play wins. So there's news. So let's pass one of each suit. Four, five, eight. Mm, oh, we got a two. That That could be useful. Let's do five, seven, nine. Maybe the six would be better in there. At least there's an even tile in there. It's going to be probably six, one half dozen the other. Okay, no, no keepers this time. We're going to keep going. So let's do four, five, seven. Let's see here. We have news. Three, I'm thinking news concealed. Here's north and a two. Okay, I'm thinking news concealed. We have a one or a three that we can use with the two. That's going to mean we, we're going to pass a white dragon. This is a little bit risky, but we have a hand with no gaps and we have our singles. Okay, so let's pass two, nine, and then let's see here. It's kind of six, one half dozen, the other, really. Let's let the one go. Okay, we have an option with the three BAM. There's an east. There's an option to play maybe the first hand. I think what I would do here is pass two. We're kind of in between the first hand and the concealed hand. Okay, two, three with news, probably. There goes our tile right away. We're playing concealed. Oh, what, where, what is our position? We are, let's see, we have, let's put these number tiles to the left so we can just differentiate them a little bit. We have an option with our three. We have a, a news with no gaps. We have an extra east. So I would say we have three clear discards with an option. So I would say we're probably a contender for this hand. And again, we're playing the concealed news hand. There's a joker. And by the way, begin game, red flag. Oh, two ban. We passed that and somebody kept it. We'll get rid of it. Another early exposure. So they're playing four, five, six, seven, Pung Kong, Pung Kong. Four, five, six, seven, Pung Kong, Pung Kong, second hand down on the right. Two exposures. Red flag. Okay, six crack, nine crack. Let's throw nine crack. We're good there. We can let the seven go. They're playing bams and dots over there. 
We don't know yet what the other two are doing. We can take a joker. Thank you. Okay, now here's another uh, er, exposure. Now we're, this is one, two, I'm counting blocks of four. One, two, three, four discards or four rounds of picks. So we're still in the begin game. The first five picks typically are going to be the, that second wall. So Agata made an early exposure. That's a red flag. So we have two robots with probable well-developed hands. Ours is well-developed too. We have two discard or three. This East needs to go. We have three discards. I would say we're, we could be a front runner with one good pick. I'd still say we're a contender because we're playing a concealed hand. We have to draw really well. Okay, four ban. My guess is they're not ready to win this early, so I'm going to risk it. So I took the risk because we're a contender. We can take greater risk. If we were an underdog, I might try to find a way to use that four because this player across from us, they needed that four. Um, there's another one of our tiles being discarded right there. Now another one. I would probably let that go now and focus on the three crack or focus on news. Pung Kong, Pung Kong or Kong, Pung, Pung Kong. Wait a minute. It's either Kong, Pung, Pung Kong or Pung, Kong, Kong, Pung. Okay, two crack. We really don't need that at all. Let's see, a six crack is on the left. We don't know what they're doing yet. Two, three, three. Let's throw the four. Okay. Nobody wants the three man. Okay, now we have, we're in the middle game now, third wall. So that's not that big of a red flag. Once they have two exposures, then it will increase. So here we need to decide, do we want to play an exposable hand or do we want to stay concealed and play the concealed hand? If we expose, I would probably play the Pung Kong Kong Pung and we would be able to act on the north and the south and then maybe the east. If we want a chance, a greater chance of winning, we probably should call this and switch to an exposable hand because our, our opponents all have exposures. They're expediting their hand development. We can do the same. So let's let's do it. Let's pong. We're going to play the first hand. So we're going to now let the risky tiles go. Maybe the two dot will give us some joker exchange potential. Let's throw the two crack here. Let's call. Okay, so now if we can call the east, but we need help with west. We don't need one crack at all. It's out. So in two more picks, 60 tiles remaining, that's when we're going to discard one of the uh, this two dot. Maybe our opponent on the left, Agata, maybe they're playing a some kind of a 2468 hand. Who knows? I suppose probably not, though, with a con of sixes. If so, they would need pairs of twos. We probably should let those go right now because of the Kong of sixes. If you look at the evens, if they're even in that category, the twos are pairs for them with Kongs of sixes. Because the sixes with Pungs of twos would be Pungs. Third hand down. So, and a two won't go all the way up to a six unless they're playing the fourth hand down and again let's see two three four it would be a pair so we need to expedite the development with the discarding of these tiles we need to escalate them as discards so let's let it Okay. 
Okay. It's already out. We're good. Okay, dragons. We don't want to hold dragons. Three dot is out. Let's throw the two. Let's see here. We're at 53 tiles remaining. 40 tiles remaining is the end game, the last wall. So we're still in the middle game. I think our riskiest tile right now, we don't have one. The threes are out. Nobody, these players are not going to want a one. And then the three dot is already out. So these, all these are probably safe. Okay, now four crack. That could be, could be a keeper. Nope. Okay, we'll call. We'll call. Okay, now we need West. Nine BAM, I see one out. Okay, one crack is out. We're, we're in the end game now, 40 tiles remaining. Last wall. Oh, we're gonna need a joker now, we got it. Not a joker. I'd say we should play to win. Push. We'll push. There are two jokers up for grabs right now. Oh, somebody got it. We got close though. One away. All right. So five, six, seven, eight. All right. We're going to go play another game. We have two pair, twos and eights. So we should play either two, four, six, eight, or seven, eight, nine of some kind. We actually have a hand in here already. Seven, eight, nine, nine. Seven, eight, nine, nine. Second hand from the bottom. Because we have no fours or sixes, that two dot is not going to be helpful. We have like numbers with fives. I think what we should do is let the green dragon go with the two and one of the fives. I don't want to get stuck with a pair. We have a hand with no gaps. Thanks for coming, Karen. Okay, so now let's keep the eights. That's in our range, seven, eight, nine. And let's break break up the two. We'll give it to somebody else. So two, five. Uh, let's, well, no, let's do that. Because we don't want to do a two, four, and one suit either. Okay, we got a keeper, the nine crack. Let's throw north green with a four. We got an eight. So we have eight, nine in here. And we have like numbers with twos. I would probably discard this eight crack and do two, five, eight like that. We have an eight damn pair. We a pung. We may not use both eights. We got the two a two crack pair now. I would not pass like numbers here. I would let the eight bam go. Because we have a hand with no gaps. We have seven eight pair pair pung nine pung nine 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 with flowers. We need help with flowers, but we have no gaps. Really the flowers would be the weakness. We have a weakness too with a seven bam. That needs to be a pair. So we have two weaknesses. Okay, we have tiles we can pass. We could do five one, but I think it'd be better to break up the two three. Because if we get keepers, I don't want to pass a two three and one suit. We got we keep getting like numbers. Yikes. Okay, now we're doing the optional. West four with a one. That's a pretty good pass. We got the eight back, so we'll keep it. If we get a seven dot, we could play seven, eight, nine, mix suit Kongs, fifth hand down on the right. Okay, so it looks like, let's see if someone discards. Oh, we got a flower. That's awesome. We don't know yet if someone kept that two. Well, someone did keep the two. Let's let it go. 
Okay, I would not call that with a joker. There are plenty of flowers left. We're just going to wait. I'd rather hold that joker for the nine dot. We could pung the nine crack and the nine dot. And the, the flower, we can use a joker or maybe draw another flower for a pure Kong later. I would not take that. Okay, now three crack was just discarded. We have a pair here. Somebody still might want a three crack and they're just not ready to call it because we're still in the begin game. So let's just hold the three crack for a little bit and see what happens. None of the robots are ex making early exposures at the moment, which is interesting. There's an early exposure with a joker, red flag. That is a red flag. Okay, six, seven, eight, nine. Not not helpful, really. That's that really the six bam is not going to be helpful unless we play six, seven, eight flowers and let the nine crack go. Let's just wait and see how we draw. We're good. Let it go. So there are two flowers out. We'll keep an eye on flowers. We got a joker. So let's let the three crack go. All right, good choice. Oh, we don't wanna hold on to this. This is gonna get more and more risky as the game goes on. West may take it, but that's okay. I don't think they're ready to win this early. So we're going to let it go now. So they were ready to take it. And my guess with two Souths out is that they're playing East and West with a run. Let's let the 6 p.m. go. We're looking for nines. We got a nine bam, but that's out here. We don't we don't need that. There are two nine bams out. That's a pair for us. We're gonna ignore it. We got a keeper. All right, so now if a if a one a flower goes down, I would call at this point. We have two discards. We have an extra eight bam. I would love to draw that seven bam. That's a weakness right now. It's our only weakness. We have one weakness. We'll call and pun. Okay, so they just got the West Joker. So now they have another joker. Three, three crack nobody wants. So we're looking for a flower, and then we'll be ready to win on a 7 p.m. Okay, nobody wants one dot or three. If a flower goes down, we'll Kong. I'm hoping we'll draw. So they're doing seven, eight, nine, seven dot or six, seven, eight, nine. There are two six dots out and there's a seven dot out. That's our tile. There's only one more. Oh no. Seven dot. Three exposures. This is a, there's one out. This would be an intolerable impact. Intolerable, high risk. We need a pair of sevens and there's only one more. We fold. Ooh. 
We got the seven. We play to win. We got lucky. We're ready to win now. That weakness filled in, so that bumped us up in position. So we want a flower or a joker. You know what? Hold the phone. One, two. How many seven dots? Oh, two, two seven dots are out. All right. So their hand is still viable, seemingly. Okay, now that that was risky. Agata is playing to win. Exposure with a joker in the end game, that is a red flag. It doesn't matter though, because we mahjong. All right. So Agata on the left is ready to win on an eight crack. To the right, ready to win on a six dot across from us one away from ready with a six dot. Okay, I hope that you're finding this helpful. Please let me know in the comment section below what you think about high risk sabotage, the red flags and position. And let me know if that has helped you in any way. Rewatch this. If it, if it is a little overwhelming, watch it again. If it is overwhelming and it's still not making sense or it's just too overwhelming, just wait until you've gained confidence with the game and then watch it later. And we're going to do this re repeatedly. So when you're ready, you'll be able to watch the videos and try to incorporate these concepts in your playing style. So here we have a pair of sixes. So that is where we start. Yep, I folded and unfolded because we we strengthened a weakness. And although that discard was high risk, it was a intolerable risk, but we are ready to win with that weakness taken care of. And we were on a multiple weight where we could have one on a flower which the robots were discarding flowers and we could have also have gotten a joker so i thought it was worth the risk and i took it um okay so now three six dot and we have three four five we have a hand in here already three four five in bams six seven crack so let's start there we have four five six let's throw the nine yeah in mahjong you can unfold <laughs> okay we have an eight eight crack pair so i would reassess here we have six dot and an eight dot we have two clear discards so now we have to make a choice with a six dot and an eight dot or eight crack, three, four, five. We have a hand with no gaps, so that's what I would focus on. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, no keepers. Six, eight. No, I would not keep these. Okay, still no keepers. Here's two, three, four. That can kind of give us an option if we happen to get a, a five crack let's keep going okay no keepers here seven bam 4.9 these really are not helpful this is a little bit risky seven nine Okay, we have a five dot. So we have three, four, five, six, no gaps. 
three, four. So I'd let the two go here and pass fully. All right, we have a six bam, four, five. I would just fold it all in here. Okay, three, four, five, six in bams, four, five, six in dots, seven, eight in cracks. We have three through eight. That's way too wide of a spread. We have one multiple, the six dot. I'd say we're an underdog on this game. We're going to play some kind of a consecutive hand. I would say probably the eight crack is our clear discard at the moment. Now we have a pair of flowers. I would play a hand with flowers for sure. So I think with a six dot pair and what we have remaining, I would say mix suit Kongs or four, five, six. Here's four, five, six, one suit Kongs. Or we could do five bam, six dot, seven crack, mix suit Kongs. So three discards and two hands potentially. Okay. Wow. Four flowers out. Yikes. Okay. Now we have four, five, six. We, we, let's see, five, six, seven. We do have another hand in here now. Second hand from the bottom. Flowers, five dot six dot seven seven. Four flowers are out. We got a joke. Let's see here. I'm thinking we should do four five or five six seven seven because we can we can call a discard for the flower. We can call for both sevens, leaving us ready to win on a five. I would play to win. And I would say we're probably a front runner at this point. Our hand is, is set. We are going to be probably exposing jokers, which is a bit risky. Okay, now nobody has exposures. That is a bit of a red flag. Let's hope that they're still working on gathering. There's an exposure with a joker. That was quick. They go so quick. There is an exposure with two jokers. That is a red flag. If someone makes an exposure with multiple jokers, they're expediting. So I would say that would be a red flag. Green is out. We need to draw that five dot. So somebody got a joker. We're good there. We got a keeper. We'll call a pung. We're one away from ready. I'd say we're a front runner. We're still in the middle game. That's our tile but we're not ready. Nice. Okay, we're ready to win on a five dot. Ready to win before the end of the third wall. This is that, that I guess it's a guideline. If you can be ready to win by the end of the third wall, if you're thinking that you're a front runner and you make that goal, I would say that that confirms your assessment <clears throat> of where you are. We're ready to win. And the, all these uh, 
I believe all the robots have been throwing flowers. Even though we don't, I don't know why I said that. We don't need a flower. We need a five dot. Nobody wants the five dot. So I think we're going to be okay here, but we're waiting on one tile. I, I would risk any discard. I would play to win here. Somebody threw that five dot just a little while ago. Now, if any of these are discarded, I might stay concealed because if we reveal, if we make an exposure with jokers in the end game, we risk an exchange make giving our opponents the ability to further develop their hand. So I would probably not call any of these and just keep the jokers to myself. We're waiting for a five dot. We're going to let it go. We want a five dot. Oh, somebody got it. It was in the wall. All right, let's try to play one more game. Okay, we have news. We have news. And then we have three, five, eight, one, five, six, three, seven, eight. Like numbers with eights, like numbers with fives, like numbers with threes. News. We have news. And a flower. Let's see here. This is going to be a challenging one. I think I would focus on number tiles, news, oh, maybe a year hand. Because there, there are year hands with wins, Kongs. We could maybe play the concealed hand. So let's keep the five or the threes and then maybe do let's see here yeah we could do that one this is a tough one all right so there's an east and we have a two so we have our first multiple in east so that confirms a wind hand of some kind so let's pass five eight six another east and we have a three we could do east and west with the year, maybe. A south. Okay, now we need to let something go. We have a red, a nine. Since we have a, a pung of east, I would probably let one of the threes go. Let's see what happens here. We ended up with a six crack pair. E there is some potential in here for east and west with a run, but that would require us to pass a two three with a one. I wouldn't, I don't think I would do that. I think I'd rather try for east and west with the year. That would even use the flower. So I would break up the six. Okay, we're going to pass three. Oh, well, now look what showed up. Two, three, four, east and west. Okay, we have a one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three, matching dragon even. We have one discard, but we have options. We're in between hands, or really in between categories even. I would say a wind hand or maybe east and west with the year. So I would say that we have at least four discards, if not more, because we're kind of in between. I would say we're going to be an underdog until we draw more tiles. We have, we have too many discards right now. We don't know if we're going to play wins or maybe a year hand with wins. If we play a year hand with wins, we don't need the north and south. We'd have to let a pair go. 
I think I would rather play a wind hand, all winds. So that would mean we'd have five, six discards. Red. All right, let's let the one crack go. We have east and west with the dragon here. White dragon's going down hard. Okay, so there's a, a early exposure here. No joker though. Another early exposure, red flags. Okay, there's a two crack pair. Let's throw the, let's see here. We may be able to do east and west with a run. Let's throw the dragon. We could also maybe do east and west with the year, although there are three white dragons out. So if, I don't think I would play a year hand here. I would play probably east and west with two, three, four, or all wins and let the number tiles go. So there's another early exposure with a joker. Another red flag, two exposures now, one with two jokers. Big red flag. So I would, there's another exposure with a joker. So I would bump us back probably to underdog at this point. unless we're able to get these jokers to help us with east and west with a run. That three crack is our tile and we can't call it. It's a pair for us. One, four. No, we don't want that. Okay, now, I don't think we want this flower any way we slice and dice this, so let's let it go now. We got a south. So with south in here, I probably would play maybe the first hand and let the number tiles go. Unless we draw a three crack. Let's see, what are they playing here? Four, six, four, five, six, seven. I think they're doing four, five, six, seven here to the right in one suit. On the left, five, six, seven, eight. Let's throw this eight bam now. Five crack, six crack, seven bam, eight bam on the left. They seem to like the Pung Kong hands. Okay, now here we have one suit Kongs. All the robots have two exposures. That's a red flag. Okay, now we're in the 71 tiles. This is probably going to be used by Agata for four, or five, six, seven, eight. So if we're going to play to win, we need to let this go now. They may call it, but I don't think they're ready to win. I would be surprised. So they weren't ready, but they need that tile. Okay, Agata got the joker. Okay, this should be safe. Nobody's going to want that eight. We're not ready for the north. I was just thinking maybe, maybe if we get flowers, we can hoard because we could maybe still try for that flower hand with wins on second thought. No regrets, though. Oh, we have a winner. Oh, it's got one suit cons. It's the dragon hand. All right. I think that'll do it for this live stream. We're at the top of the hour. So I hope that you found this helpful. I know that it is a bit more advanced than usual. Please give me some feedback. Let me know if you think this should be a topic for prime time rather than for beginners. I'm kind of leaning that way. But I need another, I need another 
beginner skill or strat uh, tactics, I guess, that we could focus on to swap it out. Thank you so much for being here with me. I appreciate it. And maybe on both. Okay. Advanced, says Sue. I'm kind of thinking it is advanced. It's pretty advanced. Just as I was sharing it. Because I've never, I've not shared this topic before. And so I'm thinking it's pretty advanced. Touch on it before moving to the advanced. Do you mean refine it? I know there's a couple corrections I need to make in there, but I think it's good. Good. I think the tactics are good. The focus is good, but I do think it's advanced. So if you're a beginner and you're overwhelmed by it, I apologize. And I'll see if I can arrange things a little differently and move this to prime time. Like an introduction to future lessons. Hmm. All right. Lots to think about. Moderators, thank you so much for being here. Don't concentrate, but say this is still being advanced. Oh, okay. I see. All right. The next time we meet for Nitty Gritty Basics, let me just pull up. Let me share my screen here. Hold on. Okay. Oh. Okay, here we go. Website. So I just want to go to the matrix. If you look for the matrix, you'll see the schedule right here. American Mahjong Skills and Strategies Matrix. Okay, so here we go. Skills and strategies matrix. I saw your comment there. Kind of do a multi-level. So make that a level two, like level one and level two, kind of simplify it and still cover it on a simplified level, I think is what you're talking about, Evelyn. Like a 101 and a 201 or a 101 and yeah, anyway. Okay, so let's see. The next time we meet, you look for the X's, and we're going to do skill builders next. Next week, we're going to be talking about skill builders. So join us again next Monday. This will be a new uh, focus. So join us again, and we'll be able to play at I Love Mars. They've got an excellent exercise room. So if you want to practice between now and then, Go to I Love Maj, and when you sign up, use Maj Life. You'll get three weeks free trial. And I am an affiliate partner there, so I will get a small compensation or compensation. I'll get a small commission if you decide to become a paid member. All right. And we'll be back again at four. And we're going to do a marathon. We're going to do marathons. We're going to talk about competitive play for prime time. So that will probably be more advanced. If you're an intermediate player, you might enjoy it. And for any of those players who have a competitive streak, it'll be a good one for you too. So I hope to see you back again at four. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching my videos and for sharing about this channel with your friends. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.